All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it with Star Wars Armada today. We're gonna do navigational hazards. This is one of those newer objectives. This has not come in the original core pack. I'm not sure which pack this came in, but. Carillion Conflict. Carillion Conflict, as Josh informs me. So we're gonna place obstacles as normal, excluding the station. The second player will place the station in the setup area beyond distance one of all obstacles and beyond distance five of both player edges. Special rule, when a ship overlaps obstacles and suffers one or more damage, or is dealt one or more damage cards, the opposing fleet's owner gains one victory point. Simply put, run stuff over, your opponent's gonna get points. Now, that sounds like a simple enough objective um, to be able to avoid those things, but here's where life gets complicated. At the end of the round, starting with the second player, the alternating, to me, and alternating, each player chooses one asteroid or debris field that does not have an objective token on it and moves it to within distance one or two of its current location. Then he places an objective token on that obstacle. An obstacle cannot be moved so that it overlaps a ship, squadron, or other obstacle at the start of the next round. Remove all objective tokens from the play area. That's where life just got complicated. So at the end of each round, all of the objectives are gonna move and go, oh, well, we're over here now. That flight path you had, a kind of an idea to avoid running this thing over. Nope, changed it. Sorry, have fun. So, that being said, let's take a look at our lists. The Empire is uh, running the same shenanigans they have been. There's an ISD, a VSD, two Byzantine fighter thingies, and five TIE mabobbers. Two bombers, two fighters, and one advanced. The advanced actually has like a name and stuff. So we'll go over and look at them real quick. All right, so. TIE Fighter Squadron, TIE Bomber Squadron, and then it's this guy. Zertic Strom, an advanced TIE Fighter Squadron. While attacking, you may choose another friendly squadron at distance one. If you do, that squadron suffers one damage, and you may reroll any number of dice in. And, excuse me, and may re-roll any number of dice. He doesn't usually do this because I kill his fighters fairly quickly, but I'm running Z95s today, so we'll see. Then he's got some Gazantes with repair crews, more Gazantes with repair crews. For those of you look, looking at at home and this is new to you, instead of spending engineering points, you may discard one damage card from a friendly ship at distance one to two. Gazantes don't generate enough engineering to be able to do that on their own. Like... You have to spend three engineering points to be able to get rid of a card, but Repair Crew says, <gasps> no, you don't. Just spend four actual points. So, oh, by the way, um, from a friendly ship at distance one to two, you're a friendly ship at distance one to two, so you can take those off of yourself. Yeah. For just four measly points. All right, this is the Victory Class 2 Star Destroyer with Minister Tua, Leading Shots, Gunnery Team, Electronic Countermeasures, and Disposable Capacitors. So Electronic Countermeasures allows you to spend defense tokens by turning this um, when they're blocked by an accuracy from the other guy. Disposable Capacitors is not able to be used on a large ship, so you can't give it to an ISD. But Disposable Capacitor says, hey, you've got blue dice that you can't shoot it at long range. Well, now you can, but only once. Gunnery Team says you can shoot the same out, excuse me, you can shoot twice out of the same arc. Leading Shot says get rid of a blue die and reroll as many number of dice as you want to. And Minister Tua says add this to your act. Let me add this icon to your action bar thing. Upgrade bar. There we go. All right, and that's the, uh, that's the VSD. Now we get into the meat and potatoes of this list. Literally, meat. So much meat. Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer has Admiral Mahdi. You're going to add a hull to each of the ships. So each of the Gozantes goes up by one hull. The VSD goes up by two hull. And, and the... ISD goes up by three hull. Then we have gunnery team leading shots. I'm trying to get rid of the glare. There we go. Gunnery team leading shots. Electronic countermeasures. I, I just did those. Hardened bulkheads. Uh, whenever you overlap a ship that's smaller than you, you don't take damage. Simply said. Avenger. Uh, while attacking, the, de the defender cannot spend exhausted defense tokens. So, yeah, that's going to be important. But, um... 
I know the card doesn't say this, but you have to tap Avenger to be able to do that. So it's only a one. It's a, it's a once per um, turn, so it can't just be used willy nilly. Intel officer. Whenever you shoot at somebody, you get to tap this thing and say, "Hey, uh, you can't use that defense token. If you do, it's gone." So, yeah, with the idea that Avenger says. Uh, you can't use the red, excuse me, you can't use the exhausted defense tokens. An intel officer says, I'm going to pick one of your defense tokens, and if you use it, it goes away. So that's, that's mean. Speaking of mean, do you see that beautiful glory over there? That's five CR90A Corvettes. And two, uh, what are they, Hammerhead Torpedo Corvettes. Yes. That's seven Corvettes, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be fun. Now, they're running pretty much naked. Um, each of the CR90 Corvettes, your, your normal Carillion Corvette, uh, has turbo laser reroute circuit. This is the alternate art card, but the words are the same. While attacking, you may spend one of your wiggle defense tokens to change one red die to a face with a crit or two hits. Um, by the way, that's not actually a wiggle. I believe it's called an evade token, but I like calling them wiggles because they're wiggly. And now we go over to the Hammerhead Torpedo Corvettes. They're also highly mobile. This says, while attacking at close range, you may discard this card to add two black dice to your attack pool. So this is a 3.1 shot thing, similar to the disposable capacitors, but instead of adding your blue dice to your attack, now you're adding two black dice. Um, yeah, let me, let, me, let me go ahead and show you what's on this, on this card as is. Shoots nothing out of its butt, shoots one of each out of its front, and one black die from each of its sides. Um, the Hammerhead Corvette is less maneuverable than the CR... 90 Corvette, but he can still go three, so this is still okay. Uh, but he likes to run into stuff, so the faster he goes, the more straight it goes. So that's kind of neat. Um, this has a wiggle, a excuse me, an evade, a redirect, and a containment. Let's flip this thing over real quick because my friend puts them in sleeves like this. This is the other side of the Hammerhead Corvette. Um, two red dice, a blue die at its front, still nothing at its rear. <laughs> Um, but two uh, blue die out of each side. But uh, I wanted to throw black dice at him this game, and hopefully I'll get to use this before it dies. It can take five whole, uh, but it only has two shields in the front and one in everywhere else. And then the crook of this list. Dun, 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 Akbar! By the way, Josh, it's a trap! Um, Akbar says, if you only shoot out your sides, add two red dice to your attack pool. So that's gonna happen, and a lot. Oh, and these these uh, X-wings are totally Z95s today. They have swarm. They're slow. They don't have a lot of hull, but they throw three red dice at squadrons and a red die at ships. They're here because I had like 29 points, and I could find a way to spend 28 points. So yeah, let's have some fun. We're gonna set up objectives and then start turn one. So, Josh wanted me to remind everybody that once a capital ship is on the table, you can play squadrons. So, he already has two capital ships on the table. I only have one. Now, I have to place another one. But then, he has two more things he puts on the table, and I still have five. This is amazing. Hey, look! Cheap point sink for deployment and stuff. Yeah! All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of turn one. None of the objectives have moved, but all of them are out here now. Um, Akbar is over here. The two Hammerhead Corvettes are here. One regular Corvette, another one, another one, another one. Fighters! So, yeah. So that ship was first, followed by two fighters, followed by two more fighters, followed by that ship, followed by this ship. And by the time that ship got out, no, by the, yeah, by the time that ship got out there, all of his stuff was placed. So that was placed after, and so were the five, the other four of these guys. So, yeah. So his deployment went Gozantes, fighters, fighters, Gozantes, VSD, 
ISD five more of my ships. It was kind of cool. Let's see if it blows up in my face. <laughs> All right, ladies right. and gentlemen, before we get too far into the end of round one, we are going to go ahead and show you what happened. Akbar, Hammerheads, not Hammerheads, Thai Squadron thing is Cosantis. ISD, VSD, two Corvettes. They're like, maybe gonna die? Maybe gonna evade everything? We'll see, right now they're out of the range, so yeah. Um, welcome to the Rebel, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Initiative sync, haha. -ha. So I just want you guys to know that asteroid field right there is totally gonna get run over by that victory at least once during this game. I'm gonna make it happen because victories are slow <clears throat> and you put it in front of an asteroid field. So yeah. All right, folks, first activation for the Empire. Did some damage to that Corvette. He narrowly escaped with his life, but not his redirect token. You know, after the second Gazanti fired at him and the TIE Fighter also fired at him. Um, so, three fighters fired at him the first time. The Gazantis were out of range. Yeah. Um, and then the TIE Fighter fired him, and the Gazantis both fired excuse me, front and side out at him. So, six dice were thrown at the Corvette, and only one point of hole remains, along with one point of shield up front and two points of shield on his left side. But he has no redirect. However, he's only going to get two red dice thrown at him from this, uh, from that thing. But it's only going to do one point of damage. But we're at long range, so maybe, maybe he'll survive. We'll see. Here goes second activation for, excuse me, for Rebels. So my friend, Mr. Corvette number seven over here, narrowly nice escaped one. the ISD fire. Because it was at long range, um, he got to stay alive. If it were at medium range, the three damage that the ISD did with two dice would have killed him. But because we were at long range, I got to say, no, I'm evading that die by double damage. So I took one damage on my front, and now I only have two shields on my left side remaining on that ship. That's it. So, yeah. Uh, let's finish the turn. All right, so we haven't moved the asteroids yet. You'll see those. I'll probably, I'll probably do a synopsis of those real quick. Um, I missed him with those asteroids, but... I will not give up. I have determination and stuff. And I get to move the first one, so that's gonna happen. Um, these Corvettes avoided damage because they couldn't be shot at. Um, we ate one of the Gozantes. That Corvette is on its last leg, quite literally. Like, it's gonna die, probably. Because um, there are things. These, those fighters are engaged with each other. The other two are not engaged with anything. Um, but I have to shoot at the advance before I can shoot at the bombers with the Z95s. But the Z95s are all on the station, so if they don't die, then they get a point of life back. Um, yeah. Spent some reroute circuits, took some shields off of the ISD. It's got one shield here. Is this, isn't it supposed to have four shields up front? I had to take some off in your first attack. Oh, that's right. Uh, so there's one shield on front, right, and rear on the ISD. But the left side is still at full. It's still at three. The VSD has not been harassed yet, but his turn is this turn. So, yeah, this will be fun um, for one of us, probably. That's only going to be fun for Rebels. Bye, Gozantes. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get points from you landing on rocks eventually. All right. That was end of first turn. Here it comes. No, that was end of second turn. Right? Yeah. And yeah. now we're on number three. So now we're on turn three, because the, all the fighters are back to blue. All right, well, that thing moved from here to there. This one went from there to here. This one was from here to there. That one went from there to there, and this one went from here to there. 
Okay, that's all of the objectives. Not objectives, obstacles. They moved, okay. Before we start moving too many things around, um, the VSD took some serious hits. Um, the Corvettes, so three of them have damage. That guy is on, it's me. That guy is on his last limb. Quite literally, he has one uh, hole left until this turn, which we'll get to remove a card. Um, and there's, there's still that pesky TIE fighter over there who's been trying to kill him, but won't be able to keep up this turn because he's going at speed four. Uh, yeah, that's a thing. Um, those guys put a whooping on the VSD. These guys killed the other Gozanti. We did a, did we do any damage to the V, uh, excuse me, to the ISD? Took off more shields from the ISD. It now has one all the way around. Um, the VSD has none on its sides, two on its front, and what on the back? One. And one on the back. That crit really hurt. Yeah, he got he got a nasty crit, which would which removed shields from the highest hull zone. The highest hull zone. So it did an extra three points of damage. So yeah, it might be the VS. Excuse me, the ISD versus everything else at the end of this game, but. These Corvettes are, uh, they're doing some damage. They've chewed through a lot of ISD stuff. So, yeah, let's continue moving rocks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the bottom of turn four. We've moved all of the object. No, no, we didn't. We moved two of the objectives. We keep doing this. By all things, the VSD should be dead. But Admiral Motti is on the other ship, and uh, his ship has only taken four... Excuse me, it took five points of damage, but he's on the shuttle, not shuttle, space station, so he got rid of one of them. So your ISD can take how much more? Two. The ISD. Josh, the big one. The ISD? Uh, I can take 11 more hits. Take. No, I'm sorry. 10 more, 10 hits. more hits. The ISD can take 10 more hits, which might come in the form of those guys eventually, maybe. This guy used his external racks and did nothing. You get nothing. The other guy hasn't got a chance to, and I don't think he's going to. Um, but we'll see. There's still still this turn, and then one more turn to move things, but that ship's going to be dead, so it won't matter. Um, yeah, lots of shooting going to come from that way. If they're in range this turn. Otherwise, it'll wait a turn. There is a Corvette over here that died. He totally should have moved first, so he would have got to shoot. But he didn't, because I'm an idiot and got excited about hammerheads. So, that's a dead ship. Didn't get to shoot. Because I'm dumb. He was totally set up to, like, remove a, a card and stuff, and didn't. Because, again, I'm an idiot. But it happens. Mostly to me. I got a point for the victory running over the, running over the rocks. I'm going to need another one this turn, because I already moved the rocks into its way. It's moving at speed one. So, I'm going to get one, if not two more um things for that whoa are the rocks gonna kill it josh possibly cool i might not even get a shoot with that thing and the highest deal go oh all of these fighters over here all four squadrons of fighters did nothing two of them rolled blanks two of them rolled crits they're not actually x-wings they're z95s they no longer get their cool things to happen because they're only spiders over there and these, it's not going to come anywhere close to these guys. So, yeah, that was the end of turn four. Here goes turn five. All right, folks, this is the bottom of turn five. The VSD has been vanquished. The One of the Hammerhead Corvettes has been killed. Um, he didn't get to shoot this turn. He just died. Um, so four of these Corvettes are moving in the same direction. The Hammerhead is driving the wrong direction. That TIE Fighter over there who's still on the table is going to survive by one. And my Z95s should all be red. And only two of them did damage. None of them did damage last turn. The ISD normally needs two more points of death. It now needs five more because of Mahdi. But I have the potential to get him. Maybe. But the dice have to be nice to me. This is turn five. I get to chase him down in turn six. We'll see what happens. 
Uh, oh, and I ran over a rock. So Josh got a point. So our victory, our victory obstacle tokens cancel each other. Now we're gonna ready defense tokens and move the rocks again. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time this has ever happened in Josh and Andrew history of playing Armada. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna remind our viewers of the previous two games that did not make it onto video. One because of time, and the other because I accidentally deleted all of the footage because I thought it was a different video because I didn't delete the old footage. So Josh beat me. Um, one of those games is recorded here as a 403 to 270. So that is a victory of, what is that? Uh, 133. So we figured out that was a what? I think it was an 8-2 like or 7-3. The other one wasn't as bad. Excuse me. One of them was an 8-2. The other one was a 7-3. Both in favor of the glorious Empire. Um, but the Empire was no match for the Rebel Swarm of Corvettes. Um, so here's this game. Rebels killed all of the things. Technically, I didn't kill the TIE Fighters, but because there are no capital ships, they die in space because they can't get back to home, I think. Um, yeah. Honestly, I was one point away from killing it. Like, it had one thing left. He didn't even bother with most of my fighters. He did one point of damage to one of the fighters, but it was on the station yep. at the end of the turn, so it healed itself. Yep. Um... He killed this one because I was an idiot and didn't have it shoot first, but I might have been able to get it out of range, and this one he straight up killed, no bones about it. Um, only one of the hammerheads got to use their external racks. It did its job, though. It did its job. It took fire for the other guys, who were way better at shooting things. Um, external racks, in my opinion, is very hit, and mi hit or miss because you have to be able to close that distance, and I was not able to do that with my hammerheads. Um, this game, those are your cards. This is your ship. And, uh, yeah. So this hammerhead ended the game with two shields up front. He, he lost one shield in his rear due to a redirect. This one's floated. Um, Akbar flew out here. He's got... He's missing one shield. Um, this one's missing shields on these two sides. This guy's missing shields on that side, this side, one from here. This guy's missing front side, not that side, and rear. So, he beat up my ships fairly well, but did not land any actual hits. Akbar never took damage. Um, number four, couldn't have command tokens, so that disabled me from being able to remove that card because Corvettes only have an engineering of two, which means I can get shields back, but cannot remove cards without the assist of a token and consecutive engineering turns. Um, ship number six actually removed a card at one point. Seven was going to, but didn't go when he was supposed to, so he died. So yeah, um, Josh, was that fun? Yes, good Josh, time. Josh says yes. Initially Practice thumbs up, but I wasn't pointing at him, so. Practice is good. Uh, this will be our last game for a little while. Um, but yeah, uh, always, this was lots of fun. Josh and I have fun beating on each other. Um, and again, this was Navigational Hazards. We'd never played this one before, so it was kind of neat. We're trying to do that so he can get some practice in before regionals, but regionals is next weekend? The 16th in Kansas City. 16th in Kansas City. So that's in nine days, and we're not going to get to have any more practice between now and then. Um, so yeah, this is Drew Baca signing off. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Never going to happen again. Never say no. But it was fun. All right, bye guys.